let's take a look at some drilling operations here. We've got many holes to drill in this component. So the first thing to do is to click on the drilling operation, which is going to pull up another similar dialog box that's based on all the other dialog boxes. You still have the same tabs for geometry, heights, and cycles, etc. So it's the same icons. All this looks very familiar. And here you can pick on the tool to be used for each operation. First one I'm going to use is a uh, number 40 drill. If I select that, the next thing I need to do is pick the holes. Now I could pick them right here, but what I want to do in the geometry selection, I want to tell the system, select all the holes with the same diameter. I could also direct it for same diameter, but only the same hole depth, or only the same Z top height. And if I move into the component, and I pick the inside of the hole, I may have to zoom in a little bit on this one. So I pick in the inside of the hole, which is hole faces. Now it's going to pick all of those holes, and I'm ready to machine the holes. The depth automatically goes to the bottom of the hole. You can force the system to drill the tip just through and break through a certain amount. So obviously if you just go to the bottom of the hole, the uh, angle of the drill is not going to go all the way through. So you can add a little tiny bit there for a breakthrough. You can also change the type of drilling operation. I've got this one set as chip breaking with a partial retract, which is important for wood because the hole gets balled up with all sorts of chips and shavings. But I could just drill in and then do a wrap it out, or I could do a counter boring operation, deep drilling, guided dungeon drilling, tapping, left and right tapping. So we've got lots of different drilling operations here. With this one, we're going to do chip breaking partial retract. And if we do a quick simulation, we can see there's the partial retract going off. So the simulation shows you exactly what to expect on the machine. For the next hole, we're going to do a same, similar drilling operation, but this time I'm going to do it with a different tool. So I'm going to click onto the tool and jump into the library again, where I've got a number 50 drill set up. If I select that and go into the select same faces routine again, I can go in here and I can pick individually, or again, I can say, select the same hole diameter so everything gets picked out. And then I can change my cycle here a little bit. I'm going to decrease the pecking depth a little bit because it's a smaller drill. And let that produce the cycle. And now I can go here and I could simulate the whole setup. If I pick up on setup and not an individual operation, I can simulate the whole program. And this will verify to me that all my operations are correct and I don't have any uh, moves that I uh, didn't think were going to happen. And you can see each operation is shown in a different color. Now obviously I'm cutting the uh, outside shape here as, as a profiling operation. But what I don't want to do is I want to do the drilling before I do that because there is a chance that this will move when this little tiny edge breaks out here. So what I'm going to do, and it's one of the cool features of the, uh, the cam environment, is I can click onto the contouring and I can drag that where I want it to be. And I can move 
my drilling operations in front of my contouring. So now I've got the facing, the two pockets, the drilling operations, and then finally the contouring. So I can select and re-edit all of these things inside of the tree dynamically. So I don't have to really make a plan before I start machining. I can alter it around as I think necessary.